Level zero. You're walking through tall grass, sun on your neck, shoes crunching the dirt. Something moves, a shimmer of scales disappears under a log. Your pulse spikes, your brain screams danger, but nothing happens because this snake, it's harmless. Roughly 80% of snake species on Earth are non-venomous. They kill by constriction or not at all. Some don't even have proper fangs, just teeth, tiny and backward curved, used for gripping, not killing. You could pick one up, not that you should, and walk away with nothing but a cool story and maybe a little scratch. This is level zero, the harmless ones. The snakes we fear but shouldn't. No venom, no death, just evolutionary elegance sliding through the underbrush. Level one, the snake looks small, cute even. You lean closer, then a bite. It's fast, barely more than a pinch. You stagger back, expecting searing pain, swelling, disaster, but nothing, or maybe just a tingle, because this time the venom's there, just not for you. Welcome to the world of the mildly venomous. Snakes like the hognose, the ringneck, the common garter, species with venom glands and grooves in their teeth, but no real delivery system. Their venom is designed for prey. Frogs, fish, mice, not humans. Sometimes you'll get redness, swelling, maybe a mild allergic reaction, but it's not dangerous, not unless you're extremely unlucky. Some people don't even realize they've been envenomated. They just say, I think it bit me, and go back to their hike. This is level one, the bite that warns, but rarely wounds. Level two, you don't notice the snake until it's too late. It's dangling from a tree branch, thin, still, camouflaged like a twig. Then it strikes, fast, clean, silent. Your hand burns, your arm tingles. The bite marks are deep, not shallow scratches this time, but real punctures. Within minutes, your skin reddens. The flesh around the wound begins to swell. Your heart picks up, and so does the fear. You've just been bitten by something like a boomslang or a twig snake. Mild-looking serpents with a slow-acting but potent hemotoxic venom. This isn't immediate collapse, it's internal bleeding. Your blood loses its ability to clot. Tiny vessels burst, gums bleed, noses run red. Victims have died from this. Not because the venom is fast, but because it's stealthy. The symptoms build quietly until they crash. This level is easy to underestimate. You might walk away, thinking you're fine. You might laugh at the bite, and then, six hours later, collapse. Even if a snake isn't deadly, never assume you're safe. Venom varies with each bite. Level three. Now, it's no longer subtle. The bite hits like a nail through the skin. The swelling starts immediately. The pain, sharp, hot, relentless, radiates up your limb like fire in your veins. Within an hour, your hand triples in size, skin tightens, fingers go numb. You're on the floor vomiting, not from fear, but from cytotoxins. These are snakes like the fer de lance, the puff adder, or the copperhead. Their venom doesn't shut you down, it melts you. Hemotoxins rupture blood vessels, cytotoxins destroy muscle and tissue. One bite can leave a crater in your arm that never heals right. In rural regions where anti-venom is hours away, Victims often lose limbs, infections set in, necrosis spreads, and that's if you're lucky, because sometimes the venom seeps into your bloodstream, your kidneys, your heart, and stops them. This is no longer a nature walk, it's a trauma ward. In rural areas without anti-venom access, even treatable bites become fatal fast. Level four, you're alert, aware, careful, and then it strikes anyway. A blur from the shadows, a hiss like a whispered threat. You see the head, the eyes, and you realize this isn't about pain. This is about time because the venom is neurotoxic. It doesn't attack your blood. It attacks your brain. This is the realm of the black mamba, the king cobra, the coastal taipan, snakes with fangs designed to inject pure paralysis. Your eyelids droop. Your breath shortens. Your muscles go limp. If you don't get help, fast, you will stop breathing. Some bites kill in under an hour, some in 30 minutes. And the worst part, you stay conscious, trapped inside a body that won't move, suffocating with your eyes wide open. This is where fear turns to pure survival, and survival depends on speed. Neurotoxic bites require immediate ventilation, 
Anti-venom alone may not be fast enough. Level 5. One bite, and everything starts to fail. Your arm swells, your legs go weak, you fall to your knees, dizzy and vomiting, unsure what's happening. And the truth is, everything is happening, all at once. Because these snakes don't pick poison, they use all of them. Meet the Russell's Viper, the Mojave Rattlesnake, and other hybrid killers. They deliver a toxin cocktail, a brutal mix of hematoxins, neurotoxins, and myotoxins. Your blood clots where it shouldn't, your muscles dissolve, your nerves misfire. This isn't just a shutdown, it's a chemical riot inside your body. And here's the twist, the symptoms don't always show right away. You may feel okay for hours, you may think you're one of the lucky ones, and then your kidneys fail, your lungs fill with fluid, you collapse, unconscious, and it's already too late. These snakes don't strike to defend, they strike to destroy. Snake venom is so chemically complex, it's being studied for cancer, heart disease, and even painkillers. Level 6. You're not in the jungle. You're in your backyard, and you never saw it coming. Because this level isn't about one snake, it's about the snake that's everywhere. The saw-scaled viper. Tiny, twitchy, aggressive. It doesn't just bite, it attacks, repeatedly, with no warning. It's not the most venomous, not the biggest, not the fastest, but it's the deadliest, statistically. It's estimated to kill more people per year than any other snake on Earth. Thousands across India, Africa, and the Middle East. Its venom causes severe bleeding, tissue damage, and coagulopathy, a fancy word for your blood turning into chaos. And the reason it kills so often? Access. It lives where people live. It strikes where sandals walk. And in many cases, there's no anti-venom nearby. A snake doesn't have to be mythical to be lethal. It just has to be close. The world's most lethal snakes aren't always the biggest or flashiest. They're the ones people live near. Level 7. You've taken every precaution. Boots, gaiters, careful steps. But none of it matters when you're bitten by something you never saw. The Inland Taipan. It's not loud. It's not aggressive. And it's not common. But drop for drop, it is the most venomous snake known to science. Its venom has an LD50, lethal dose, of 0.025 mg per kilogram in mice, which means it takes less than a milligram to kill a full-grown human. One bite has enough venom to kill over 100 adults. Not theoretically, mathematically. It strikes fast, precise, and deep, often multiple times. The venom spreads immediately through the bloodstream, delivering neurotoxins, procoagulants, and myotoxins in one overwhelming surge. You'd think a snake this deadly would be a global menace, but it's not. The inland taipan is shy. It lives in the remote deserts of Australia. It avoids conflict, and bites are extremely rare. But don't mistake rarity for mercy. If this snake were aggressive or common, we'd be reading about cities, not survivors. It's not just a venomous animal. It's a mathematical apex. The inland taipan's venom is about 50 times more lethal than that of a cobra, but it rarely bites humans. Level 8. Nature experiments. Constantly, slowly, quietly, and once in a while, violently. At this level, we stop measuring reality and start watching for possibilities. What if venom evolved beyond the fang? Spitting cobras already aim for the eyes. Their modified fangs eject venom in a pressurized spray, enough to blind a predator from several feet away. But what if the spray wasn't a stream? What if it was a cloud, a mist? Aerosolized venom drifting in the air, inhaled before the snake ever bites. Imagine a cobra that doesn't need to strike to disable. Just breathe near it, and your lungs burn, your eyes swell shut, your throat constricts. Right now, no snake does this. No species has evolved to turn venom into an airborne threat. But venom itself, it's made of proteins, enzymes, peptides. It's theoretically possible to alter the delivery the same way bacteria spread spores or jellyfish release toxins through touch. If this evolutionary path were triggered by survival pressure, more predators, human encroachment, climate stress, the snake wouldn't need to be more venomous, just more efficient. And when that happens, you won't see the bite, you won't feel the strike, you'll just choke on the air and realize it's already too late. Level 9. This isn't a forest, it's a lab. White coats, blue gloves, a glass box with something inside, alive, coiled, twitching. But this isn't nature's design. This is synthetic biology. 
Level 9 begins where the genome ends, a place where snake DNA is not inherited, it's edited. What if scientists, governments or worse, rogue actors took venom genes and amplified them, tweaked them, combined them, spliced them into hosts that never evolved to carry them? What if we gave a python cobra venom or a viper fast-acting neurotoxins? It's not science fiction, not anymore. CRISPR, gene drives and venom gland studies are already advancing. We're learning how venom is made and how to make more of it. Now imagine a super viper, one with fangs that regenerate, one whose venom bypasses known treatments, one resistant to anti-venom because its peptides mutate every generation. You wouldn't even know how to treat the bite because the rules have changed. The worst part, it wouldn't have to escape a lab, it could be released, a bioweapon with a pulse, not delivered by syringe or drone, but scaled, silent, and waiting. Level 10. You wake up to sirens, not fire trucks, not the police, emergency broadcast, evacuation alert. You turn on the news and see footage of people running, falling, foaming at the mouth, collapsed in parks, malls, train stations, and then you hear the word venom. Level 10 isn't a snake, it's the use of snakes or snake venom as a coordinated weapon. Think venom harvested, concentrated, and aerosolized. Or snakes genetically programmed to seek warmth, follow noise, or survive in urban settings. Snakes released during wartime, during civil unrest, during pandemics when resources are already stretched thin. The goal isn't just chaos, it's attrition. Snakes don't need bombs, they don't need bullets. They slip through cracks, strike without warning, multiply in shadows. Imagine an airport infested with ultra-lethal serpents, bred to survive on scraps. Imagine venom sprayed over a crop field, sickening not just humans, but entire food supplies. Imagine snake venom added to water systems, slowly poisoning populations without leaving fingerprints. It's not hard to imagine, because it's already happened, in pieces. Cobra venom has been tested for crowd control. Rattlesnake proteins have been studied for gene therapy, and for weaponization. At this level, the snake isn't the threat. Human imagination is. Level 11. We look at fossils and imagine bones, teeth, size. But what about venom? What if the most dangerous snakes the world has ever seen didn't live now? But then, meet Titanoboa, roughly 13 meters long, as thick as an oil drum, a prehistoric serpent that lived 60 million years ago in what is now Colombia. We think it was a constrictor, that it crushed crocodiles in swamps, that it ruled the rainforest, but we don't know that for sure. What if Titanoboa, or its cousins, had venom glands? What if evolution took a different path in the ancient tropics, where prey was massive and survival meant striking once and killing fast? Imagine a snake the size of a bus, with fangs long as daggers and venom designed to stop a dinosaur's heart. We'll never know for sure, because venom doesn't fossilize. But traces of early venom genes show up in primitive snakes. Venom evolution isn't modern, it's ancient, possibly tens of millions of years older than we thought. So somewhere buried under mud and time might lie the echo of a snake so toxic, so dominant, that it died not from weakness, but from success. Level 12. This is the last level. Not because it's the deadliest snake, but because it's not a snake, it's a system crash. Venom has always been a tool, a survival mechanism, a natural weapon with surgical precision. But what if we lost control? What if the world's understanding of venom, synthetic peptides, neurotoxins, hemotoxic enzymes, was used not for healing, but for extinction? A bioengineered venom that mutates like a virus, one that spreads through vectors, animals, insects, maybe even water. It wouldn't just kill individuals, it would collapse systems food chains, crops, pollinators. Kill the bees and the flowers die. Kill the fish and ecosystems rot. Kill the predators and prey overruns the land. The venom wouldn't need to be injected. It could be absorbed, inhaled, transferred from mother to child. Imagine a synthetic venom that targets human nerve receptors, indistinguishable from common illness until millions are affected. Imagine governments scrambling for anti-venoms that no longer work because the formula shifts every few days. We're not talking about snakes anymore. We're talking about an extinction event, one not caused by asteroid or fire or flood, 
but by a strand of molecules designed to end life efficiently. We've always feared the fangs, but at this level, the venom doesn't need a mouth, it just needs a moment, and the world changes forever. If this changed how you see snakes, imagine what else nature's hiding. Hit subscribe for more. See you in the next video.